what we're trying to do is to be able to program a living cell in the same way that you would program a robot or program a computer. Each dot that has a circuit in it, then when the dots are connected, you get the bigger circuits. Twitter screen, and then a screen against the pro library, then all of the columns should be this. We're really focused in two major directions right now. One is to truly turn uh, the programming language for life into something that looks very much like a programming language for a computer, where somebody who is a genetic engineer can write code in the same way that an engineer at Google is programming one of their applications. We would be able to program a living cell. So a cell is very much like a computer in that it can take different inputs, perform logical operations on these inputs, and output some function. So for example, it might be if A, do B, if C, do D. Like a computer, as a result of synthetic biology advances, a cell can also be reprogrammed or programmed with novel functions. So that now instead of if A, then B, it could be if A, then C, or if A, then D. This paper by Boyd and team is quite significant in that they now show that it's possible to program an entire population taking advantage of the diversity of the population as opposed to programming just an individual cell. So much of the advances that have been made in synthetic biology over the last decade have focused on reprogramming an individual cell and seeing how it is. Boyd's team has shown you can engineer multiple cells and have them interact in a population to now create diverse and much more complicated functions. And then put it on. So the cells are engineered to have fluorescent protein being produced. It's surprising that you could actually start applying the principles in um, electrical engineering and computer science into biological systems. And um, the more so we can do that, the more predictable biology will be, and the more we can engineer biology to do interesting um, applications.